it was a clear night, lovely moon, there's a thin cloud and snow on the ground. And uh, so the temperature outside the cockpit was pretty cold. And I started having weird readings on the instruments that I couldn't understand. I mean, all pressure stays constant, the all temperature starts going up. It doesn't make sense. So I did the one thing I shouldn't have done. I was, I was the first case of a thing called coring, where the oil froze in the oil cooler. Yeah. And uh, I opened the radiator, which what it should have done is to shut it and boiled it out. Yeah. But I opened it, uh, called up Middle Oldham and told them what was happening, so they gave me a course to vector to the nearest airfield, which was warm all on the coast. The engine suddenly stopped completely as shadow sparks went past. But anyway, I came out of this thin layer of clouds slap over the middle of warm water, so it was a wonderful vector. And I knew Warm was a long, narrow airfield with hangars at one end and the wood at the other end. And so I'd come round in over the hangars and keep my speed well up so I could leapfrog them if necessary at the last minute. And I saw the loom of the hangars go past on my left and uh, so I thought, I'm safe, and I put it down. Well, since I'd been there, they started bringing in big heaps of rocks and things to mend the airfield from bombing. I went straight into one of these heaps. The airplane stopped dead, but I didn't. I carried forward and I wrote my face off on the gun sight and broke an arm. And I remember looking at the sky and I could see it, I could see it was light up there. And while I was looking, it suddenly slowly went dark, which was my face swelling up, obviously. So I put my good arm up to my head to find my nose stuck on the top of my head. I thought, that's weird, it shouldn't be there, really. Anyway, a couple of minutes later, some a couple of blokes turned up and... Uh, they started to pull me out, and I remember getting very cross because they put, they tore my trousers getting me out. It was the only decent pair of trousers I possessed. And anyway, they got me out, and I went to local sick quarters, and uh, I was blind by then. And this wonderful motherly voice sort of got hold of my hand, and I then passed out. And uh, they took me to the local cottage hospital in Warmore, uh, where luckily for me, there was a very good surgeon on call from the local army. And he came in on call and uh, stitched everything back where he thought it ought to go, put my eye back into place, and because that had been, well, this eye had been knocked out. And he stitched this nose back down to the skin where he thought it ought to go, and uh, put drainage tubes up there, and uh, that was it. Nothing more he could do. Well, I was there for a few days, and then they sent me to Park Pruitt, a man called Gillies. It would be Sir Harold Gillies. But he was a wonderful man because I had some 20 odd operations there. Mackinder was assistant at my early operations. Anyway, Gillies was a psychologist as well. He encouraged us to go out and frightful sights. Some of these chaps, you know, with pedicles where they take this flap of skin around the nose. He'd go out of the pub and have a beer. So we used to go into, into Basingstoke. And there's a place called the Red Lion, Basingstoke. Half a dozen of us would pile into a car and go down there. If you can imagine these really ghastly sights, wander walking into this beautiful pub, and all the people sort of edging away, shocked horror from they really were edging away from it. The big busty blonde barmaid there, who deserved a medal if anyone ever did, she, she used to say, "Hello, my darling." She'd come round and give us all a kiss. Now that was bravery, it really was. Please help to rescue and preserve more memories of the Second World War. Visit www.war-experience.org.